The lines between tablets and laptops have been blurred for some time now. A good pen and tablet solution is important to an artist, but they need more power than a traditional tablet offers. So HP aims for that audience with a ZBook Studio X360 G5, which is a convertible mobile workstation. Aimed for users who need both, the Studio X360 may fill an important need coming in the mid-range of HP's multiple studio offerings. And as I unbox, you can see that there is a Wacom style pen that is included with this unit. There's some extra nibs here, of course, and the pen is HP branded, but it is a professional grade Wacom pen. Erase button at the top and a pressure sensitive tip with a couple of buttons on the barrel. The power supply is definitely not that big, which is great. It's pretty portable and looks pretty sleek and gives a good 150 watts of power. My attention is usually first drawn to the CPU, the GPU, and the memory combination for any mobile workstation. This X360 G5 has an impressive Intel Xeon E2186M, which is a hexacore that runs at 2.9 gigahertz. Now looking at the case, we've got a nice solid feeling case with some pretty cool branding on the cover. The bottom has a nice ventilation grid. On one side, we have two super speed USBs, a SIM card slot, a cable lock ventilation, and the power button. The front is pretty clean. And the other side has an SD card slot, the audio in out, HDMI, as well as two Thunderbolts and the power port. And the back is pretty Spartan as well. And when I open the lid, I'm testing the strength of the hinges and they're quite solid and secure, which is fantastic. You kind of need two hands to open it, which is actually a good sign. You want good stiff hinges. We have a large trackpad with an NFC location and multiple touch gestures. Xeons are pretty well known for their mission critical and workstation needs. A few CPU combinations can be had with this unit, including i7 and i5 CPU. The keyboard is a nice chiclet style with a short travel for each of the keys and is really nice to type on and is actually backlit as well to a nice extent. The Bang & Olufsen speakers run across the top. And then when you pick up the unit and slide the screen all the way back, you turn it into tablet mode, which disables the keyboard on the back so you can rest it on your lap and use it like a tablet whether using your finger or using the pen. Now the side SD slot doubles as a pen holder when you're using it in tablet mode. You just simply plug in the pen holder into the SD slot and you can clip the pen right onto your tablet. Now orienting the tablet into an easel display is really easy. And then right back to laptop mode just like that. Graphics is handled in this review unit with a Quadro P1000M, which has four gigabytes of video memory, which is definitely no slouch, but it's more the entry to maybe mid-level professional offering from NVIDIA and the mobile workstation. The Intel UHD Graphics P630 will handle the less intensive tasks to save power as most mobile systems do. Now of note with this $4,200 review unit is 32 gigs of memory, which is really fantastic. Running the system for a little bit, I started to notice intermittent fan noise getting loud every now and then. Which I'm told is easily fixable with a firmware update. Now, the Bang & Olufsen speakers sound really quite good, so I decided to run them through a YouTube-based sound test. Hi, welcome to Dr. Mix. This is a signal test for you. Which showed that even at loud volumes, there was no distortion in the sound. The included professional-grade Wacom AES pen 
is more responsive than using a finger, and it's actually pretty fun to use. Strokes on the display register immediately with very little lag, a little like Cintiq response times. Using the pen with TV Paint, Photoshop, Sketchbook, or any other pen editing app will be very satisfying. And this is where this X360 G5 really, really shines. This unit's 4K Ultra HD multi-touch screen is bright and clear. Colors are vibrant and remain consistent with the 15.6 inch IPS panel even when you're at an off angle. The multi-touch gestures are responsive and accurate. Now I personally have a problem reading 4K in any display that's smaller than 24, maybe 27 inches. 3D apps that I use a lot like Maya or 3DS Max, their interfaces don't quite play very well yet with window scaling. I would recommend using the non-4K Dream Color display option. An HDMI 2.0 port allows for 4K output to an external screen in addition to using displays with Thunderbolt 3. As well, it has a headset port for audio in and out. Your options grow if you couple the X360 G5 with a Thunderbolt 3 docking bay. This has a Bang & Olufsen collaboration-minded speaker system. Now the Bang & Olufsen speaker is a separate component to the dock which installs pretty easily. The dock comes with its own external power supply which is a little bit bigger than the laptop's power supply itself. This plugs directly into the dock itself. Now the dock has some branding on the top, a USB-C connection in the front as well as the cabling to the laptop, and in the back has a USB-C two display ports, a Thunderbolt port, the power connection, an old school VGA port, two USB 3 ports, and a gigabit ethernet connection. The side also has an additional headphone jack, a cable lock, as well as another USB 3. The connection to the laptop goes directly into one of the Thunderbolt ports as well as the laptop's power port and it adds an external USB audio device that gives improved audio over the already impressive Bang & Olufsen internal speakers. Now running sound tests reveal that the internal speakers sound pretty good, they get loud with no distortion. The external docking bay gets even louder and deeper and richer and shows no sign of distortion even at 100% volume. Hi and welcome to Dr. Mix. This is a signal test for you. Now, because we've got a wire coming out the front of the dock and most of your connections are going to be in the back of the dock, it can get a little bit awkward with cable management with this dock having cables coming out of both ends. And of course, try not to suffocate on the plastic bags. Now, when stretching the graphics system using Spec View Perf 13 at 1920 by 1080 resolution, the P1000 card in this unit performed well enough for basic to intermediate 3D application use, and it posted about 15% better than the similarly equipped but older Studio G3. Now at 4K, many of these tests threw an error and halted the benchmark showing that the P1000 is maybe not quite enough for intensive 3D applications at the full 4K. Now for a lot of 3D users, it'll work just fine. Overall application performance is buoyed by super fast storage from a 512 gigabyte Toshiba M.2 SSD, which is super fast. The 360 G5's light gray metal chassis is pretty. It seems durable and easily accessible for service needs. And yes, while a notebook is thicker and heavier than a traditional tablet like a Surface Pro or an iPad Pro, it is also a laptop and has a lot more to offer. The chassis converts easily to tablet mode, and though the hinges seem sturdy, there is a little give to them. When I push open the screen a little more, the screen settles back another few degrees. Now I recall the more precise hinges on the Studio Gen 3, which to be fair, is not a convertible laptop that has a Gorilla Glass touchscreen like this one does, so maybe it's not quite apples to apples. Now in all, I find this to be a good professional-minded machine. 
if perhaps slightly aimed more for 2D artists, but still quite capable of real-world 3D work. I especially appreciate the pen input and tablet abilities for 2D artists, while offering a solid, fully capable machine on top of a solid tablet. 